Hi everyone, uh, I'm here uh, with Buster in one of our offices uh, and I'm one of the trainers here at Royvon. Buster is a staffy who is with us on a behaviour modification programme and one of his issues is uh, other dogs. So in order to, for him to be able to uh, get closer to other dogs in a safe way and uh, as part of his management strategy in the future, uh, we're going to muzzle train. We're going to train him to enjoy his muzzle. Now, uh, I just brought him here with me to the office uh, to teach him to enjoy putting his muzzle on when I realized that he actually hates the sight of the muzzle. He may have never... <sighs> he, he may have never seen the muzzle before. He may... I'm just going to put him on the for a second. Just bear with me for one second. A ball fell off the desk and he is very, very, very ball motivated. So once he has the ball, we won't be able to work. So I need to put that ball away. Okay, so the ball is going up here. Right, so hopefully we can get, can get uh, Buster's attention again. So back to the topic. Uh, uh, Buster is actually afraid of the muzzle. He, he, there's no point in trying to give him treats for putting his mouth in the muzzle because he, as soon as he sees the muzzle, he actually walks away. So I did a few repetitions with him when I realized that actually you might be interested in seeing um, this process because some dogs uh, may have already a, a, a bad association with the muzzle. So what do you do then? How do you actually teach them? Right, so I'm gonna take the, the lead off. And uh, so what we're going to do is I'm going to show him the muzzle and the moment I show him the muzzle <laughs> because he's full of me, um, he's going to get a treat. Then I'm going to hide the muzzle and there is going to be no treats. Um, in order to be a little bit less predictable, I have two more balls here that I need to put away before he gets his muzzle on them. Um, <laughs> Where were we? Yes, yeah, so, so I need to be unpredictable. So what I want is for the sight of the muzzle to be the predictor of the treat. I don't want him to think that it's my hand movement when my hand reaches into the pouch or the way I, or where, where I look or, you know, every two seconds. I don't want him to, uh, to think that anything else predicts the treat other than the sight of the muzzle. Okay, so I'm going to sometimes move my hand with a treat into my pocket and then do nothing for a while and then show him the muzzle, then give him a treat. Sometimes I'm going to reach into my treat pouch, then show him the muzzle, give him a treat, and I'll just try to mix it up, right? And I may give him, show him the muzzle from one hand and from the other. Or that he is clear about what predicts the treat. Okay, and um, once, th so this is your step with dogs who are just, who just see a muzzle and they leave, right? They go away. Once the dog is happy and excited to see their muzzle, muzzle and their, um, you can see there is an expectation in their eyes rather than avoidance, now you can take it a step further and start feeding from the muzzle as if it was a bowl and so on. But be prepared to spend a few sessions on this and don't make the sessions very long. Uh, there is no rush. So we probably won't be getting anywhere far in this session. All I want is for him to start trusting me that the sight of the muzzle doesn't mean trouble. In fact, it means something nice. Okay, so let's get started. And now I'm hiding both the muzzle and the treats. So you can see after only a few repetitions that I've done earlier, I am on, I'm no longer actually seeing the avoidance. Okay, so another repetition does the same. You can see he's starting to look at my left hand, which may start becoming a predictor. So I'm going to mix things up and I'm going to switch hands. Now he's going to see the muzzle from my left hand and my right hand is going to give him a treat. Yes. Now I'm going to hide the treat into my hoodie front pocket instead of, you know, taking it straight from the treat pouch that's in my, uh, behind my back. So the treats are now here, muzzle, and here. And again the same. 
So he can see and hear me reaching into my treat pouch for the treats. But instead of going into his mouth, the treats just rest. Nothing's happening. It's not the hand going into the treat pouch that makes treats come. Yes, it's this. That's what it is. Okay, I think he might actually be ready to try to offer him a treat from the very mouth of the muzzle, if that makes sense. Okay, yes, he is. Okay, so we're already making progress. But you can see he's a tiny little bit, uh, if you can see his face, let me see if I can, just so you can see him more clearly. You could see possibly that, that he is a little bit unsure. You can see in his face and you can see how he's now taking the treats more subtly, more delicately, more tenderly because he's a little bit worried. So I want to make, I want to show him that there is nothing to be worried about. In fact, each time he sees a muzzle, something nice will happen in relation to the muzzle. Now, bear with me, um, I'm going to shut up for a second and actually just focus on what I'm doing. Because very often when I'm talking, my actions with my hands and so on aren't so good. So let me just get it definitely right. Watch me and if you have any questions, just type in the comments. Okay, I'm going to take it one step further and I'm going to try to feed through the actual muzzle. I've showed him the muzzle so he needs the treat. <laughs> I'm not going to cheat there. So I'm going to feed him through here now and then next step would be to feed it through here. Right? But the straps are all way, way, way back for the moment and all we're doing is we're trying to get him to put his, we're trying to get him used to putting his face inside the muzzle in future. And each time I've given him the treat, I'm taking the muzzle away. And I'm actually almost rushing it. I'm almost taking the muzzle away from him. It kind of changes the dynamic. It's no longer me kind of like forcing the muzzle towards him, pushing the muzzle towards him. It's quite the opposite. I'm actually taking it away. So he has to start working to keep his muzzle in if he wants that treat. Now we're going to take it one step further and I'm going to feed it, I put it through here or through here depending on where your baby's mouth is and feed it like this. I hope you can see it. Okay, he's distracted by some barking outside the window so I'm going to give him a second to check that everything is okay. He's back to me, now we can work. Oh, you can see he's backing off. So we're back to, because of the fact that he had a little break and because we changed the angle and something has changed. So he's back, he's now again worried. I really don't think you can see him, but maybe now. Yes. You actually don't have to say yes or mark it at this point. It's just a habit I have, but it's not going to do any harm if you do. So you can see that each time he sees the muzzle, he moves his head towards my other hand. This means he's predicting the treat. Let's see. Sorry, sorry for staying quiet. I'm just trying to see if there is any questions there. Okay, right. Oh, I've just done a little thing that you shouldn't actually do, and you could see the tiny micro movement of his of his face. So I actually moved the muzzle towards him. Avoid that. <laughs> this is what not to do. Instead, present the muzzle and then let the dog come in by himself. So this is more progress than I expected, which I'm obviously very pleased with. And we're going to do three more repetitions and finish here on a good note, okay? Good boy. One. Two. Wow, 
lumbastric position. I'm taking the muzzle away. Muzzle, muzzle goes away. No treats. The fun stops when the muzzle isn't there. I hope this has been helpful. Okay, here we are. My dog wouldn't take the treats if he sees the muzzle first time too. So I hope, I hope. Yeah, and you know what? Uh, Buster hasn't seen this particular muzzle before. He has seen the fabric muzzle, but I don't think he has seen that one if I remember correctly. But dogs are smart and they see some contraption and they, they I don't know, you know, can he predict what it is? Probably not, but it looks suspicious to him. So I hope this has been helpful. If you need to take a good few more sessions before uh, the dog is actually able to eat from the muzzle, do it. There is no hurry. Just do, you know, do a three minute session or a session with 15 repetitions where you show the muzzle, give the treat, take the muzzle away. Show the muzzle, give the treat, put the muzzle away. Right? And I hope this will help and eventually you'll be able to, to train. Uh, is there any other questions? I don't think so. So I hope this has been helpful. Let us know in the comments if um, you have any questions or if you would like uh, any other. Oh, I have another. I like, I'd like to have him trained with Royvon local to me. So uh, send us a message on our page, on our main page, the page from which I'm broadcasting about uh, with, with your question. Oh, but he's deaf. Oh, I really would love to train him. <laughs> I hope Murther is local to you, um, because I would love to train uh, your dog and help him out. But if not, all our trainers and all sides have experience and have all the need, the, all the necessary knowledge. Deafness is in no way um, an issue. Uh, it's a, it's an initial challenge, but it's not a problem. So so, uh, drop us a message, send us um, send us your your query, and we would be absolutely delighted to help. So send us also some questions in the comments if you have any particular, um, you're welcome, any particular um, topics you would like us to make a movie on and we will be delighted to do that. Okay, bye bye, have a lovely day.